so the sweet thing about Node Excel, and it's unique, maybe not any more unique, but it does have importers for Flickr and YouTube and Twitter, your email, and lots of other sources. So if you're interested in social network analysis, which we are, you just use the dialog box and you can then import from the Twitter stream all the people talking about a certain topic. Now, the first time we did this, it was at a conference at New York University called Workshop on Information in Networks, September 2009. We had 80 people in the room, and there was a feeling that there was a bunch of sociologists over here talking to each other, and a bunch of sci computer scientists over here talking to each other. And you may have been to conferences. I don't know. Uh, Oksana, do you have a is hashtag AUCD? Or? Yes, we do. It AUCD is. 2012. Yep. And what's that? AUCD 2012. 2012. Actually, if we have time, maybe we'll go yep. grab that network. It will be, it will be great see, after to do that. See yeah. who's there. Um, but this showed the network because we can grab not only the individuals but who they follow and who follows them. So you get a lot of data out of, uh, out of, of Twitter and sure enough there was a group of sociologists and a group of computer scientists and one graduate student at, at MIT who was connected to both groups. Okay? It was a really great moment for us because it, the, the story I like to say is that Increasingly, much of what we do is online. Whether it's shopping or credit card or traveling or whatever we do, or you know, Facebook and Twitter. And increasingly, we have the tools to be able to put on those special glasses and see what's happening in real time in these worlds. So maybe we will have time to do this and try the AUCD on that. Um, here is a more rich map, which is of all the tweets on Twitter which mention GOP, which is Grand Old Party, a term for the Republican Party. And you can see there's a large, they're all, we painted them red, and they are large and densely connected. The blue Democrats are less numerous and also more spread out. They're not so well connected. These are largely Tea Party and not strong conservatives who are very active on Twitter, actually. All right? And then, the, so this is a kind of portrait of controversy. We have two groups, each connected up, and they don't talk to each other too much, except for that big blue dot. Mm -hmm. What's the big blue dot? The website called Politico, which is read mm -hmm. by both Democrats and Republicans and seen as sort of a middle ground. So, you know, Fox winds up over here in the Republicans, and of course New York Times and other, uh, you know, are more in the Democratic side. So you can see these patterns, and my colleagues have studied actually the, the patterns among 20 major news sources and whether those uh, Republicans or Democrats favor them. Um, we began to do, well, I guess this is another political one, but we developed this method of looking at the groups we call a group in a box. And here is the red Republicans and the blue Democrats now teased apart and put in their own place to view. And then we get the Twitter pictures of each of these people, and we can see the clusters of groups. And there are other groups that are not aligned with either Democrats or Republicans. This was following the State of the Union address. Uh, this is the World Wide Web Community Conference in 2010, and this is a great example of a cohesive community. They're well connected uh, to each other, they all know each other, they're all, you know, talking to each other, they follow each other on Twitter, except for about 5%, which down below are groups that, you know, are not connected to any of these people. And so that's kind of a, a well-organized community uh, as, as, a, as an example. Um, I think I'll, this was Microsoft Research. I think I'll skip that and uh, some other ones. This was a conference we ran at Maryland called Theorizing the Web, run by our sociology colleagues. and just shows, again, the clusters and relationships among them. But let me go to this one, which is a little clearer for you to see. Uh, a little smaller. This was a conference I attended at MIT in April of this year called Collective Intelligence. And I've become 
active in this work about social media and how, how you form groups that work together effectively. And it turned out there were a bunch of clusters uh, uh, that this blue group were a lot of academics, that's me. I'm pretty active in doing uh, Twitter, but there are a lot of people who are more active than me. These are a bunch of business types. This was a, a foreign group, um, Brazilians, especially active. This woman was in a room, Marina Miranda, and she was really pleased to see herself show up there. And then we had a German bunch over here. And so we begin to see how these groups uh, form and grow over time and who are the most influential. So the network analysis tools let you resize the, the, the nodes by some property. And you could size them, I think I size them here by the number of followers they have. So there are some people who have a lot of followers, or you know, maybe you can size it by the number of tweets they issue. Okay, that's another way. Or you can begin to do measures, something called between the centrality is a big thing in network analysis, which measures how well connected up any person is to the rest of the group. There are some people that have a small number of friends, but they're really tied in well with that particular group. So those are the things that you'll read about in the book there. And this is a great story. Um, a researcher on uh, urban planning and innovation, uh, he was working in the state of Maryland, in the state of Pennsylvania. And this is 11,000 nodes of data about innovation in the state of Pennsylvania. This is another one of those examples of it looks beautiful, but it's really hard to make any sense. Of it. And so our story uh, is we clean things up as a process. So we did do our group in a box, and again, it's sort of hard for you to see, but the main, in, the biggest influence in the state of Pennsylvania are two individuals that each hold about 100 patents in the pharmaceutical area and domain. And they have some relationship with each other, as well as a relationship with a number of companies, and that's the biggest driver of innovation in the state of Pennsylvania. And the second biggest was Westinghouse Electric, which its research center in Pittsburgh has a lot of patents and a lot of association with companies and a big influence. Otherwise, there are two, these two clusters, both are in the uh, uh, areas surrounding Philadelphia. Unfortunately, our layout put them across the screen, so these wispy lines connecting them are hard to see on this uh, projector, but they are on there. So, once again, we simplify, and we get a little bit of a simpler story. Now, you can read that, the Pharma Medic uh, HHS support for them, the Westinghouse Pittsburgh. So, by filtering down, you get to see more of what's going on. And this is pretty one. I asked this guy, Scott, his name is Scott Dempel. I said, Scott, you know, Pennsylvania's good, but we're at the University of Maryland. Can you do me a University of Maryland one? So he said, I'll do even better. And he grabbed all of the people in our laboratory uh, in the new community interaction lab at the University of Maryland College Park. And he got the NSF grants the, that they were uh, principal investigators on. So there's me and my colleagues, Jen Goldbeck's the current director of the lab. And then you can see the way we work with other groups around the state of Maryland, Baltimore County, Medical School in Baltimore, and so you can get an understanding of the relationships that are going on. And the university is currently trying to do a lot to stimulate more collaboration with the medical school in Baltimore. So they're supporting all kinds of collaborative exercises and projects. And so uh, we begin to see how we're doing. And you can see by the way, that we're connected with those groups, but not the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Sciences. And it's true, we don't have any projects in collaboration with them. And maybe we should. They seem to be active researchers, um, and those might be candidates. So uh, as I was saying during the break, that we like to have data where we understand something. I like that data where you get an insight, but the, really, the, 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 the real treat is when you get something that's actionable that you say, oh, hey, you know, that's somebody I ought to talk to. And it tells you something that you can change your behavior, change your policy, and, and make a better outcome. Um, all right, we can stay with this. Uh, this is another way of showing the Twitter data. Um, 
for the conference, the main conference in my field, the Computer Human Interaction Conference in 2010. We're just getting these tools polished up. And instead of laying them out in a network, we lay them out by the number of followers they have and by the number of tweets they issue. And you can see a pretty strong outlier. You see that mm -hmm. over here? This woman, her handle is called Zephoria. Her name is Dana Boyd. Uh, you may know her. She was a researcher for Microsoft and really thoughtful and very big in the news. You'll, you'll read about her all the time. And she's often quoted whenever there are stories about social media. So she writes really interesting tweets, and everybody follows Dana. She's really So she has a low number, she doesn't have the highest number of tweets, but she's way out in terms of number of followers. So she's really influential. Okay, and down below you find my buddy Mark Smith, and I was just getting into it then. I'm still below here. I don't tweet a lot. I have a modest number of followers, but I'm doing okay. Uh, the ones below the diagonal are the people who are influential. The ones above the diagonal, we call them losers. Because they tweet a lot, but nobody really cares. In fact, the extreme case out here is something called VoiceBot, which tweets and tweets and tweets and tweets, but doesn't have very many followers at all. Okay? And so, right away, you get this picture of what's going on, of who's important, and, and this portrait by using a combination of network analysis and then this essentially scattergram two-dimensional approach. Do you have a hand question? Yeah, just uh, a question, uh, two questions actually. Is this similar to the algorithm that something like Clout would use to uh, yeah. get some kind it's of a... It's a visual way of showing that. Clout does try to give you a number, a single number that tells you your Between clout. zero and a hundred. Yeah. Um, which is fine, as I said, you know, statistics are fine, uh, but, you know, you get a number out of cloud and you're not quite sure what it means because it's the combination of many variables. This shows you what's going on. And with whom. Yeah, and it sort of highlights how far off you are. And I can't tell if I have a cloud of 60 versus 80, like, how big a difference it is, but this really shows you in a visual way. That's yeah. my pitch here. That the the other is question is, yeah. what's the broad data that you you would pull into this and the other tools that you saw? And All how hard the, is it to acquire that? Uh, it's a it, few clicks. I'm going to do it for you since we'll do AUCD mm -hmm. for us, kind of. Uh, this is early in the conference, so yeah. the hashtag is... <laughs> it, it's that's just what we're going to do. That's our next... I'll finish this up and we'll do yeah. that. And this is Flickr, I guess maybe this is a personal one. I do a lot of pictures, and so this is my Flickr uh, account where I put the name. So that's me, my daughter Anna, there's 28 pictures I took with Anna, and then there are 25 with Sarah. Anna and Sarah together, there's 39. Sarah married Mark, I took 93 pictures. So you get to see that. My sister's here, her family's over there, various other cousins out here on the front. It's all done automatically, okay? I didn't, I didn't lay this out. The algorithms do all this. Here's our lab, and here's our close bunch. The greens are the ones in our lab, or close collaborators. There's a bunch of IBM in blue. There's a few, there's other professionals in the HCI, the human computer interaction world, that we're friendly with. You may know Don Norman, for example. He's written a number of popular books in this area. Uh, and so this was a great story that showed these. That's the book. It's going around uh, at 30 bucks. I hope you'll pick it up and download it for free. Uh, that's uh, Microsoft Research supported this for our first four years, but they sort of said go out and prosper, and so we we did. Uh, well, we're not we're struggling. We're going on struggling, frankly. So we we established the Social Media Research Foundation, a nonprofit organization, and so. Um, you know, we're, we are looking for donors and sponsors, and so we need that. And we, we have some groups that are working, by the way. Mark Smith's been the sort of key partner, and he does consulting, and so he, get, from the consulting work, then he gets some money for this. I'm gonna cruise through. I guess my closing slide says here that, you know, the goals we should have for visualization and for all the work we do is to make the world a better place, and this kind of is my set of, um, uh, of criteria or requirements, end poverty and hunger, universal education, gender equality, child health, maternal health, 
combat HIV AIDS and environmental sustainability and global partnership, and I hope you devote yourself to that as well. Uh, and finally, just sort of encourage you to come join us on the web uh, or for our big 30th anniversary uh, celebration, uh, May 22nd, 23rd. Uh, we do, if you're in the Washington area, we, and this Tuesday, for example, we have Mary Sherwinsky of uh, Microsoft is coming to speak in our, our lecture series. And uh, she's talking about, you know, devices that measure your emotional uh, status and your, your health. And, so. and I, I guess that's it. So all these will be put up there. You can get them. All right. So you've challenged me to go make the AUCD. Let's see what we can get done here. So, uh, you know, we'll just... <laughs>